These are the ones we just never saw coming. And what better place to start than the fight that could well have dethroned one of the greatest of all time? Johnny Hendricks was highly regarded before coming into his first shot at UFC Gold. George St. Pierre was an all-time great, a guy who had schooled several world-class wrestlers at their own game and thoroughly dominated his way to a long, long winning streak. GSP was expected to beat Hendricks confidently, and yet when fight night came around, Big Rig produced a shockingly good performance, stepping up to the plate with a showing that should have won him UFC gold. And yet, in one of the most controversial decisions of all time, George St. Pierre retained his title, retiring on the spot and depriving Johnny of a well-deserved rematch. When you get stopped by a brutal, one-sided TKO in your first attempt at beating a dominant UFC champion, the fans aren't exactly going to be throwing money on the table to back you in the rematch. But Henry Cejudo had rounded out his game tremendously in the time since Demetrius Johnson beat the brakes off him in under five minutes at UFC 197. Though he was not given too much of a shot ahead of fight number two, Henry went out there and took Mighty Mouse right down to the wire. This was one of the tightest fights you'll ever see at championship level a showcase that proved that Cejudo was right up there within the elite level. In the end, it was close, but the longest title reign in UFC history was brought to an end by a truly massive underdog. Sean O'Malley took a pretty major step up in competition when the time came for him to take on Peter Yan for his first ever top five test. And though he proved that he was definitely on Jan's level over three rounds, the judges' decision split the fans down the middle. Even though Sugar Sean was clearly elite, he was still being overlooked by large portions of the public. When the time came to take on the champ, Aljamain Sterling, O'Malley was seen as a pretty considerable underdog. But on fight night, any worries about Sean's grappling or wrestling getting exposed were confidently shut down, and the challenger produced a masterclass of footwork and feints, freezing Aljo up and eventually allowing O'Malley to score a huge counterpunch in round two to eventually get the finish and take home the title. Remember, if you're enjoying this content, be sure to leave a like and a comment before subscribing to the channel so you don't miss a single upload. As far as Uriah Faber was concerned, age was just a number when he signed on the dotted line to end his retirement and take on the rising talent Ricky Simon. Despite being 40 years old, Faber clearly saw something in his day-to-day -day life in Team Alpha Male Gym that inspired him to get back in there. But let's be real, Ricky Simon was the guy who was on the rise. The UFC most certainly knew what they were doing when they matched him up with Faber. Beating an old legend to a new talent is the oldest trick in the promotional book, but on fight night, Faber shocked us all, catching Simon early with a huge overhand in the opening minute, sending the crowd into hysterics. Before anyone knew what had happened, the ref was jumping in to call it all off for a 46-second TKO, a massive moment for the California kid. It took the fans a long time to get over the initial shock of seeing how badly and how limited Francis Ngannou was made to look in his first collision with Stipe Miocic. And despite going 4-0 with four rapid knockouts as he bounced back, the fans and many analysts were still not convinced that he had made enough improvements to beat a fighter like Stipe. But man, they were proven wrong in shocking fashion. Ngannou showed up as a far more patient and terrifying presence casting all doubts over his evolution to one side as he stalked Miocic, freezing him up with the threat of his power. Not only did he show incredible improvements to his wrestling defense, but he even knocked down Stipe at one point before brutally KOing him in round two to win the belt. It's hard to believe that Nate Diaz was once seen as Nick's little brother and a guy who had really failed to live up to the brother's competitive and commercial success. So when Nate took a short notice fight that he was expected to lose against the featherweight superstar Conor McGregor, all appeared to be going to plan for Conor in the UFC after round one. But after Diaz's chin proved to be too difficult for McGregor to break, the momentum switched wildly in round two. 
Connor gasped, Nate grew into the fight and eventually tapped the Irishman out with a rear naked choke. A shocking turn of events that made Diaz an instant star, an even bigger attraction than Nick had ever been during his peak. Anthony Pettis is one hell of a striker in his own right, but stepping up in weight to take on Steven Wonderboy Thompson at his own game was also going to be a tough ask. And sure enough, for the first round or so, the fans were getting exactly what they expected. Thompson was keeping his distance with the level of mastery we've all come to expect from him, and despite his own speed and dynamism, Pettis was struggling to close the distance. He would need something truly special here, and boy did Showtime find his moment. In the dying embers of the second round, just as Wonderboy seemed to loosen up in anticipation of the bell, Pettis launched into a Superman punch that caught the veteran striker clean on the chin, getting Pettis the most insane knockout of his career. One of those you really had to be there kind of moments. Cody Garbrandt might be better known these days for his reckless fighting style and subpar chin, but when he got his first title shot back in 2017, he showed up and turned everyone's expectations on their head when he dominated the great Dominic Cruz, showing a level of slick and stylish striking that was far beyond what anyone thought he was capable of. Cody's head movement was so insane on this night, a far cry from what we usually see from him these days. And though it's Cruz who usually makes his opponents miss their punches, he was the one who flailed his way to a decision loss and the loss of his 135-pound belt. Although he slumped into a nasty decline afterwards, Renan Burrell's famous win streak saw him over 30 bouts without a single loss, dominating other members of the bantamweight division to really make a dent on the pound-for-pound -pound conversation. So when Team Alpha Male's TJ Dillashaw stepped up to the plate and absolutely destroyed Burrell over five rounds before head-kicking him for a TKO, yeah, this was not the expected outcome. Dillashaw was not only beating one of the best fighters in the sport with a style that came out of nowhere, he was offering us a glimpse into the future of MMA striking, a complex system of footwork and feints, all coming to the table with a beautiful variety of attacks. This version of TJ Dillashaw was just on another level. And finally, we come to one of the biggest upsets in UFC history, and one that really knocked us off our feet because of the nature of how it happened. Joanna Jedchek versus Rose Namajunas was a classic striker versus grappler matchup on paper. Joanna was really starting to break through in her quest for mainstream fame. With her legendary Muay Thai ability, Thug Rose was expected to have only one route to victory, her grappling. And yet, despite all of Joanna's attempts to play mind games with her, Rose went in there as cold as ice. And managed to KO the greatest striker in women's MMA in the very first round, knocking her down twice and even forcing Joanna to tap out to strikes. Namajunas winning under any circumstances would have been wild, but this was a different level of shocking entirely. If you enjoyed today's video, show your support by leaving a like and a comment before subscribing to the channel so you don't miss any content week to week.